Mark Finan here in the Home Weather Office. You know, we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of the Cosumnes River flood of January 2023. So at this time, it would be a good time to look back at what happened, what caused that flooding, how excessive the rain really was for that basin, and the Cosumnes River. It's a good time to talk about the Cosumnes River because... Well, it is an unregulated river, and that means there are, there isn't any flood control on it, like on the American River where we have Folsom Dam or on the Feather River where we have Oroville Dam, it control the flows coming out of the Sierra. That doesn't happen on the Cosumnes. Whatever happens in parts of Amador and El Dorado County comes down the hill, and there's no stopping it. So part of the equation, of course, was the, was the wet weather we had leading up to uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. These were the rainfall totals that we had on New Year's Eve, 1231-22. Now, these are actually two-day totals, but in Pollock Pines, we had over 12 inches of rain. In Placerville, more than 10, and Georgetown had 11. Now, a lot of that goes into the South Fork of the American, and I didn't find any reliable totals that came out of Amador County, but they were similar. And all of that comes down into the Cosumnes. Some of it, again, goes into the South Fork. But let me also show you this. So uh, this is a percentage of average precipitation for the month of December. Let me help you get your bearings here to see what you're looking at. So this is Lake Tahoe here, Sacramento, Modesto. So this area highlighted in this purplish color, this is where the Cosumnes River Basin is, right in here. And I don't know how well you'll be able to read these, but this is 234% toward Placerville, 213, uh, 268 in Amador County, a couple of spots in the 250 to 300% of average rain. Now that's average rain for the entire month. And of course, some of that will incorporate what we saw leading up to New Year's Eve. But it will also tell you is that even leading up to that, we had a lot of rain last December and as well as snow. And that saturated the ground. So once we did get that heavy rain at the end of December, that it led to the excessive runoff that we did see going down into that basin. Let me give you a couple of refresher looks at what it looked like back on New Year's Eve. I went out and about last year and uh, shot a couple of videos. And this is... I shot this from the South Fork of the, I should say, yeah, the South Fork of the American River. I shot that from the Salmon Falls Bridge. I mean, there's logs going by, and you get, just look at the, the, the amount of water coming down. Of course, it's still raining hard. Um, so, yeah, and even, even uh, look at this little tributary coming down here. Water's just pouring off the hill. So this isn't just draining off the, you know, what's coming down from Placerville and above. You know, it's all draining off, and all of this is safely going into Folsom Lake. So that isn't as much of an issue as in areas that are uncontrolled. Let me show you another area. This is a creek that is off Salmon Falls Road that you wouldn't even know there's a creek there. This is called Sweetwater Creek. I guarantee you would drive on Salmon Falls Road right now, you wouldn't even know there's a creek there. It's just a little bend in the road. But well, this water is roaring. Now, this too also dumps into Folsom Lake, but you, you can hear the volume of water here. Um, and so just imagine that this is also what's going down toward the Cosumnes River, but there's no stopping it from getting down to the valley floor. So, yeah, this is Sweetwater Creek. <laughs> um, and like I said, you could drive by that today and you wouldn't find it. I got another one more video to show you. This is, um, this is Cameron Park Drive. And this, uh, this is also indicative of some of the flooding that we saw. And again, this is on New Year's Eve, 2022. And so this is Cameron Park Drive near the airport. And you can see the amount of water uh, coming down across the road. There were businesses that were flooded on the, uh, on the west side of the road. And so for those of you familiar with this area, this is a little bit to the north of Meter. Um, and just as you're coming up to the airport, I'm driving south here. But you get the idea of just how much water there was that was that was flowing down, uh, flowing down the hill and coming coming off the hills, if you will, and all of that was going to be leading to flooding. And and you knew that once it get down to the valley floor, that we were going to be seeing flooding. Now it wasn't going to be uh, a surprise by any any stretch of imagination, uh, because all of this was forecast pretty well by the flood forecast center. Let me show you the forecast for 
the Cosumnes River at Michigan Bar. If you don't know where Michigan Bar is, Michigan Bar is out by Rancho Marietta. Here we go. So this is the forecast that was put out on Saturday, December 31st, first thing in the morning. The blue line is the forecast and the green line is the actual. So not bad. They were forecasting to go up to around 17 feet. This line right here is 16.4. They're forecasting to about 16 and a half, almost 17. Flood stage is 12. It actually ended up uh, right around 16 even. And then of course it came down. That's a pretty high stage. Back in 1997, it did go a little over 18, I believe, or close to 18. All right, so there's that gauge. Now farther downstream, there's this gauge. This is at a place called McConnell. It's basically at Highway 99. And this is the one that I want to pay the most attention to. Now, again, this is the forecast Saturday morning, December 31st. And right now it's at 43 feet. It's forecast to go to uh, about 47 feet right here. And then the actual was really close to that. All right. So again, the forecast was there for there to be significant flows on the Cosumnes River coming down to the valley floor. Now, the significance of that is that the amount of flooding that we saw in Wilton and that we saw on Highway 99 was forecast on the morning of December 31st and the flooding that happened that night and the next day was forecast. I showed you the gauge at McConnell. Now, one of the things that's helpful about an area like the Cosumnes or any other river is the USGS and other water agencies are out there. They know what these high flows do from historical flows on those rivers. So with that in mind, at the bottom of the gauge reading, you'll see this, this right here. So it says when that gauge hits 46.5 feet at approximately 44,000 CFS, which we reached, actually exceeded, um, Dillard Road is flooded um, to, uh, from Highway 99 to Riley Road. Twin City Road is flooded from Hardesty Lane to Christensen Road. So we know that Highway 99 floods. We know the Dillard Road floods. We know the Twin Cities Road floods in those cases. So the flooding was predicted on those roads. The thing that I still find frustrating is that people were driving into that water at night and first thing that morning on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and, uh, and people lost their lives in that flooding. A tragic event um, that unfortunately wasn't, the full warnings weren't perhaps put out there that those roads would be underwater and just how deep that water might be. But it's a lesson that, that should have been learned from 1997. Those same roads went underwater. The flooding in 97 was actually a little bit worse, but uh, the, the, the lesson from 1997 should have been learned on that, uh, from that flow to the flow that we saw a year ago. So that's a wrap up of the flood, the Cosumnes River flood of 2022-23. Lessons learned, lessons still to be learned because we will likely see a flow like that again on the Cosumnes River.